Ciao, everyone. This is Esther. Alfred here from our secret, undisclosed location. In our house. In our house. <laughs> Welcome to You, Me, and Sicily, or welcome back to You, Me, and Sicily. We're going to go to Via Grande. Wait till you see this unbelievable shop that has all types of things. And I happened to catch one of the ladies making the sugu. I love sugu. We haven't had sugu in such a long time. I can't remember it. But they do it good over there, that's for sure. You know, we've taken you to the shop before, but there's always something fun and something new. So take a look. I snuck in here into the kitchen where we're cooking something. Che sta facendo? Polpettone al sugo. Aspetta, prende polpettone. Polpettone with sugo. Here she has the sausage. Si. They're always making something delicious here. Si, what's that? Tomato extract and look at this chunk of cheese. And this is salsiccia. Salsiccia secca. Dried sausage. And poi che sa? Poi mettiamo la salsa di pomodoro. Then she's gonna put the salsa of the pomodoro. Mettiamo la salsa di pomodoro. First she's gonna fry it a little bit. Questa carne con che? Ripiena. Con uovo sotto, formaggio, cipolla, onions, pancette, salsiccia, bacon, e poi salsiccia. It's always an adventure here. <laughs> always something new in this little shop here in Via Grande. He's so cute, I love his hat. He's always doing something fun. Saluta tutti. Buongiorno a tutti. Good morning, very people. <laughs> fun, huh? All right, let's see what else we have here. Hanging pepperoni. All kinds of canned things. Sicilian olive oil. All right, here we got our olive oil, our honey, a little bit of a fava. Ciao, senora. This is Buongiorno. the mother, <laughs> the boss. Buongiorno, America. She is the boss. And look how beautifully she writes out everything. All the products she hands writes. You guys know what this is? A very typical sweet. Here. Let's see, what else? We're just starting to uh, see some of the Easter products. Here's the Agnello, lamb, and some Columba cake. And then the pasta selection here is just unbelievable. And look at the cheese and ham hanging here. I love him. <laughs> so this is a typical family-run business. Everyone's here. The mother. Alfio is the son. And here's Giuseppe. He's the other son. And then you saw Maria cooking. Okay. Action! Action! He had me try some. Oh, Prosciutto mama. Goto. Um. Action! <laughs> Bravo! Pani che figo. Prosciutto Goto. Nowhere. Ma all the food, food che a Catania godono tutti. E state meglio tutti. Fate l'amore. For you. Made people. with love. Oh. 
Ok, bella, te in pezzi pane che te ricri. Bye bye. All right. The, uh, the one on the right is a fig. And I like to get a little bit for breakfast tomorrow morning. And the other one is with the walnuts, okay? And uh, my gal over here is gonna take a nice photo. <laughs> Look at the scachata, Al. I'm not gonna get the scachata today. No, though. because I'm no. gonna make some. Yeah? And then out here, he has all the vegetables and fruits. Always seasonal. Here's some anchovies. Questa bacala? No. Wow. Late in the season for that. And then here's some beans. Fabe Marco. Ooh, celery. We tried this last year, but we didn't do very well. I'm trying to grow the celery. Here's some cheddari, which is in the family of a lemon, but not a lemon. Cartofe. And then the blood oranges. So there you go, a little peek inside of our favorite little shop in Via Grande. <laughs> Bello! Look at that celery. Hand delivering it. <laughs> Ciao Alfio. Wow. Bastardo. 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 Bastardo, si chiama. fiore. Grazie. Always something fun, right Al? You got it. What a great family owned business since 1884. And you can see the entire family taking a very active role in running that shop. You know, uh, we buy our oil from there, our olive oil from there. A two liter bottle, and you saw it at the counter. I think it was 14 euro. That works out to seven euro uh, a liter. And it's really good. It has a peppery finish. I usually cut it. Uh, to kind of flatten out the peppery finish a little bit. It's just terrific. And they have probably the largest assortment of pastas oh, yeah. that I've seen in <laughs> any place at all. And they have very esoteric things there that you would never find in a market. Yesterday I was looking at blueberry balsamic. It was mm -hmm. a spray, and I think you put no, it on... No, it was ginger. And ginger was ginger right balsamic. next to it. There was blueberry, and then there was ginger right next to it. You don't see those types of things the, uh, um, in a regular supermarket. So the it's a terrific thing place. is that they're always reinventing themselves. They're always doing something new. So every time we take you in there, I'm like, oh, I've never seen this. Very, very cool shop. This morning I had for breakfast, I had a slice of the fig bread that I bought uh, yesterday that she, she showed you a picture of the fig bread. All I did was take a little bit of butter and I toasted it. Very good. And uh, you don't need to eat much. One slice, believe me. A lot of figs in there. It's terrific. Only in Sicily are you going to get the breakfast of champions. This is fig bread. It's just unbelievable. With a cup of coffee, I don't think there's anything better. Next, we're going to go to Urna and have a cup of coffee. Now we stop for a cup of coffee at Urna's. It's lunchtime, so they have a lot of good stuff. There's the cipolline with the onions, risotto, pasta alla forno. But I gotta tell you, these sweets just look amazing. They're doing a little bit of a reconstruction, so they relocated this little area. But usually, there's much more stuff. Un americano e una macchiato. Sì. Va bene? Sì. <laughs> Posso vedere? They're dancing while they're making our coffee. I love it. 
<laughs> oh, look at those beautiful cups. I'm having a cafe macchiato, which is a little bit of steamed milk and a little bit of canela, which is cinnamon. And the Americano is a cup of coffee with the hot water. Ecco a te. Bellissimo. Questo è quello macchiato allora, giusto? Sì. Grazie mille. Prego, grazie a te. Saluta a tutti. Guardate, questo è Forse. quello macchiato? Sì, macchiato e tutto. Questo è il macchiato. Per l'acqua? Buono, grazie. So we're going to have a little bit of coffee. Prego, signore. After all this sì. difficult shopping that we did. <laughs> yeah, very interesting to get the the whole tenor of what this is saying. People feel right now, buddy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm everyone's talking about it. Yeah, everybody's talking about it, that's for sure. We'll see. So we were a little bit surprised to see that they're doing some construction over there in Urna. Um, <clears throat> so they're expanding and making uh, more like a restaurant. You know, Cafe Urna is a uh, landmark. Okay, in the summertime, um, Nadio, who's one of the uh, owner's sons who runs the place, uh, told me that they make 3,000 arancini on the night, at night, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday nights. They have a huge, beautiful outdoor pizzeria, Esther, mm -hmm. that is just great. But the thing that I like about Urna the most is their gelato, uh, cakes that they have. Oh, beautiful gelato cakes. Oh my cakes. God, it's just a great place. You know, one a of lot our, of history there too. One of our first episodes we did of you, me, and Cecily was there and you were having the Cipollina and all types of street food. So yeah. I'll put a link to that at the description of this video. But just a great place to grab a cup of coffee. Last thing I want to say about Urna is that it's a very historic place as well. During the Second World War, it was oh, taken yeah. over. It was taken over by the Nazis, and it was re it was converted into a field hospital. And then after the Nazis were uh, pushed out by the British forces, they in turn uh, used the facility as a uh, a field hospital as well. I swear when I go in there, sometimes I can feel the, the spirits of these people. Uh, one of the guys who owns it, one of the owners, it's about four or five cousins and brothers. One of them actually lives in Massachusetts, John Jafrida. Uh, he's a good friend of mine, and the whole family is just stand up. So, Cafe Una Via Grande, put that on your list of a place to go. I love to see this the woman walking arm in arm. All right, Alfred, what do we have over here? Yes, do you see up top over there the writing is faded? Okay, during the Second World War, Mussolini had those put in, in all the churches, they were supposed to be erased. But it says, Fatherland, defend the Fatherland, fight for the Fatherland. And this is on one of the churches in, in Via Grande. It's still there. Yeah, this is a great store, too. Little side streets over here. Via Giacomo Puccini. Now I'm going to take you to the public garden. That's the main street here in Via Grande, large street. And here's the public garden. This is one of the most beautiful public gardens. They usually have events over here, festivals. Benvenuti, welcome. And look at this water fountain. In a couple of months, these will all be beautiful large roses. Little playground for the kids. And you know what these structures are straight ahead of you? This is where they used to make the wine. People, farmers from all over the area brought their grapes in here and they made the wine in here.
course, stomping on grapes is not allowed anymore because of the EU. But for centuries, they made the wine in these little structures. You know, those palmentos, the places where they used to stomp on the grapes to make the wine is very, very interesting. Our friend Salvatore was telling me that they used to bring in the barrels of grapes after they picked them on the field, and they counted them by naming the saints. So each barrel was the same. And first was, of course, Mary, and that way they would know how many barrels they had because obviously they weren't educated back then. But the other interesting thing inside of that palmento is that they used to sing Sicilian songs while stomping on the grapes. Why? Because some of the fumes that were released from stomping on the grapes were sometimes made people tired or dizzy, and they knew when someone stopped singing that they weren't feeling well and that they needed a break. So a little bit of a tidbit, making grape, making wine here in Sicily, which of course, you know, has been going on for thousands of years. And the EU with its vast knowledge decided that stomping on grapes is no longer uh, hygienic. And so you can still have that experience, by the way, certain vineyards, including the ones that we go with our clients, they do allow that you have to pay a little bit extra though. You know, that uh, public gardens that was given to the town of Via Grande, which used to be part of Tricastani, by the way, uh, Via Grande by a wealthy benefactor. And the town has well used it. You ever see the movie Cinema Paradiso? Do you remember every Saturday night they had uh, movies for the inhabitants of the little town in Cinema Paradiso? They do the same thing in Via Grande. Every Saturday night, they offer to the senior citizens and the kids uh, a beautiful outdoor experience, whether it's a concert, whether it's a movie, something, something along with food, along with food, you pay like six or seven euro for a delicious three course meal outdoors. Via Grande in the summer, again on a Saturday night. And in the fall as well, Alfred, they always have And that. in the fall they have the, the harvest. Festivals. They have the in harvest fact, we festivals. Went we went to the harvest festival. It was just killer mm -hmm. for a little town. Uh, it's just the essence of Sicily. You don't understand unless you go there. What a yeah, beautiful town! Yeah, it's not a touristy town at all. No, but not if at you all. want to know no. how everyday people live, Via Grande is definitely one of the towns you should visit. Definitely great place. Also on your way to Trecastani, Zeparana. So all those little towns on the Etna, on our side of Etna, are great places to visit. We always bring our, our travel groups there uh, to walk around a bit, to go to a great restaurant at least once, or usually once, Piccolo Mundo, which is there. Mm -hmm. there. We've been working with them for over 20 years, or I have at least. Alfio's, we also stop and see Alfio's a beautiful place mm -hmm. that you saw. And our vineyard is there. Our vineyard is there, and also uh, the public gardens, very public gardens. That's the place, by the way, so I, we didn't say anything, but that's why that inspires me to write my books. I usually go there quite well, a bit. Well, speaking about your books, you still have oh, no, books wait a available? Minute. Well, okay, I'll talk <laughs> about that, but I wasn't planning on it, but I'll talk <laughs> about it right now since she brought it up. My book, The Reverse Immigrant, this is the first book, yeah, it has been sold out for a long time. However, I, a couple of years ago, I uh, did the book again for Kindle as a Kindle print on demand. So if you want a soft copy of that book, all you need to do is go to Kindle, search my name, Alfred Zappala, and you can order that book, okay? Um, four of my books, the other three, Figu Bedu, Gaetano's Trunk, and Joy of My Heart, those books are offered as well on Kindle as a download. They're like a dollar and ninety-nine cents each. And finally, because it's Easter time coming up, uh, I'm going to be offering again my last three books: Figi Bedu, Gaetano's Trunk, and Joy of My Heart, for seventeen dollars. But only if you order it directly from Esther. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> now message listen, her. Listen, not and she'll because give it's you, Alfred, she, not because it's Alfred, but listen, it is a very easy read. It's about everyday life in Sicily, also growing up in Lawrence, Massachusetts as a Sicilian American. Very funny, very informative. So not because it's him, but they are good books. Yeah. All right, next we're going to go to Conad because it's beginning to look a little bit like Easter around here. <laughs> good point. Here are some of the Columbo cakes for Easter. I'm going to get a Classico that has orange, dried orange, and also almonds on it. Cremari is very good as well. It's 11 euro. Uova de Pasqua. Look at all these eggs. 15 euro for one of these big ones. 10 euro. Wow, 19. Dark chocolate. And some more Colombo cakes, all type of flavors. I think I'm gonna get also a hazelnut and pistachio for my mommy. All right, so this is what the Colombo cake looks like. It's generally shaped as a dove. Beautiful symbol wait, of Easter. Wait, you don't understand how delicious that is, okay? <laughs> you don't understand how delicious that is. That, can you get the box? We showed the box last week. I endorse no, this we... brand. And by the way, I have nothing to do with this company, Balaco. They're sold in fine gourmet shops in the United States, Italian shops. Get Balaco. Okay? Also Tre Marie. And Tre Marie, of Tre course. Marie is very but this good. one over here tastes like a coffee cake with some dried fruit and beautiful nuts on the top. I'd go like this. This is how much you should eat. People say how much you eat every day. I go like this. It's about very that much in your hand. Okay? I like the ones oh with my the pistachio God, it's great. cream. Those are my favorite. No, nope. so. if you it, and, and then the it cake, it's they great. They're great. <laughs> Thanks to your generosity, we've been able to give some money to some of the charities and churches that are collecting resources and items for the refugees that will be arriving to the Ukraine. And my friend Giuseppe, the priest of one of the churches, did this little video where he went around and showed all the things that have been not just donated, but also purchased thanks to donations from people like us. You know, people are coming in. They're coming in more and more and more and more from Ukraine, from Poland, and then from Poland they're being dispersed. And Sicily is already seeing refugees already. And, the, and, and by the way, the region has been preparing welcoming centers, and also they're going to be doing testing and offering free vaccines to those who haven't been vaccinated. If you haven't made a donation to the Sicilian Project, what we're doing is doing a huge, as big as we possibly can, fundraiser right now that's going to go, whatever comes in is going to the refugees. As soon as money comes in, we're... Organizations that are helping the refugees. In Sicily, okay, in Sicily. Now, you can donate by simply going to the SicilianProject.com, www.SicilianProject.com, make a donation online. Over there also is an address. If you don't want to make a donation online, write a check. It's tax deductible. Or if you're one of my Facebook friends or one of Esther's Facebook friends, or one of our Facebook friends for you, me, and Sicily, we're having a fun way, fundraiser even online. So the real, and it's all tax deductible, okay? So please help us out right now. Do good and forget it. Do Thank bad you so, so and regret much. it. Ringraziamo il Signore, e ovviamente San Gaetano, San Mangesco di Paolo, Sant'Agata, benedicono questa attività. Dio vi benedica. Grazie e un abbraccio a tutti. You know, as we were going around, we were talking to people about their concerns about the Ukraine. And, you know, a lot of people are concerned and worried about the cost of gas, of electricity, of commodity, of uh, foods in the supermarkets have definitely gone up. And we went to a supermarket and boy, the price of gas has skyrocketed since January. This is the price today, March 10th. 233 for diesel and benzene at 226. A month ago it was 176 and 
In January, it was about 160. So to give you an idea how much prices have gone up. Well, the prices at the supermarkets have gone up significantly. It's far cheaper than the United States, but not gas, Alfred. Gas, gas is still cheap, okay? I mean, people are... People are complaining about everything. If, if there was no issue in Ukraine, believe me, they would be complaining about everything else. <laughs> One thing I've learned is Sicilians here in Sicily, they complain about everything, okay? Now, that said, that said, the EU and the Italian government will make moves to do things like perhaps waive the excise tax on the gas which or is the, cap the price or of cap gas. the prices of gas, okay? But people are so worried about stuff. The thing that I am worried about, and I'm sure the government will react, is the price for flour because it's that's a controlled Wheat. commodity yeah. here, and people in Sicily depend on flour far more than the United States. You they can eat, expect they the eat, cost of bread and pasta to go up. Yeah, and for the uh, less fortunate, okay. They eat pasta almost every day, I would say every day, or bread almost every day. We don't eat bread or pasta every day, but guess what? You get a, a half a pound of, I mean, a, a kilo of pasta is a buck, a dollar. A throw some more. vegetables on it, throw a little I bit of... I 130 yesterday. It's 130. So figure for two bucks or three bucks, you could feed a family. A two, a two pound bag of pasta with some vegetables that you pick by the road, throw some EVOO on it, salt and pepper, and a mother can feed the family, okay? Because there are different people out there, people who are getting a buy on 600 euro a, a month citizenship income. Stop and think about that. $800 or $900 a month plus some food stamps, and that's about it. So, I yeah, I can say, see that there's a big worry. I do have to say we are very, very, very fortunate, and I'm so grateful for that. And on that note, I'm so grateful for you guys for spending this time with us. We thank you so much and hope you enjoyed this video. And by the way, it really helps us if you hit the like, share it with a friend, leave us a comment what you thought of this video. Here's what I want to say, okay? So, Benedigo, that means... Peace be with you. Go in peace with the Lord. And now you ought to start saying that as well. Sa benedica. Amen. Okay? God bless Arrivederci. you. Ciao.